Here's a pretty straightforward demonstration for energy analysis. So here I've just got an ordinary clamp stand with a clamp that you'd find in any science classroom. And on that I've just got an elastic band. I've got a kilogram here, so 10 100 gram masses. And essentially what I would do is just measure the extension there, given that we've got 10 newtons of force measure that extension, work out a spring constant K, and then with that extension, work out the elastic strain energy stored in the elastic band at this extension. So that's basically 12 centimeters. Take that off and replace that with a Beano style pellet. And put it down to the same extension, release it, you've been able to work out the energy from the elastic strain energy is K delta X squared. Equate that to kinetic energy and you can work out the speed of that projectile and it leaves the catapult. Pretty good, you could even get the kids to do that as an experiment as long as you could trust them to do that safely. And of course the safe thing to keep their faces out of the way. So this is all the information I need to calculate the speed of that projectile. The force was 10 newtons, one kilogram mass times by 10, which is G, 10 newtons. The extension was 12 centimeters, but I'm going to want that in meters, which is the SI unit of length. So just convert that straight away. Similarly, with the mass of the pellet, I think I'll just convert that into SI as well, because I've measured it in grams. So 0.65 times 10 to the minus three kilograms because we need to be using SI for our calculation. The first thing to do is calculate the spring constant of my elastic band in the way it's set up using Hooke's law equation. F is K delta X, K being the spring constant. Rearrange for the spring constant, F over delta X. Plug in the numbers, 10 over 0.12 gives me 83.3 and so on, but I'll just show eight, two significant figures is fine newtons per meter. So I've got my next little step, my next little bit of data. Just write this up here, ready for my next calculation. 83 newtons per meter. The next thing I need to do is to calculate the energy that's stored at that extension. So the elastic strain energy is a half K delta X squared. So let's think about that. What am I going to type in the calculator? Well, I'll type in 0.5 instead of the half, if you like, times 83 times 0.12 squared. I'm going to do two significant figures, 0.60 joules of energy. That's my next little bit of information that I need before I work out my final, my speed. The elastic strain energy, 0.60 joules. Okay, in energy analysis, we make one form of energy, in this case, the elastic strain energy equal to another, the kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy equals half mv squared. So rearrange that times by two, divide by mass and root it to give me the speed. So that's all I need to really do here. I've got the mass ready to go. Um, I've got the elastic strain energy there. So in the calculator, I'm going to type in the root of two times 0.6, don't need to type a zero in, over 0.65 times 10 to the minus three, 83 meters per second. So initially that pellet was leaving the um, catapult at 43 meters per second. Does that seem about fair? Well, you could actually test that out, couldn't you? You could think about, well, that's basically traveling somewhere in the region of kind of 80 miles per hour. Does that seem about sensible? Would it go across my room in like a quarter of a second? Yeah, okay, and that's, that starts to seem a little bit more sensible, doesn't it? So it does seem like a sensible thing. Obviously, that's not going to be the exact answer because there are other energy transfers involved. We're always going to dissipate a bit of energy to heat in the surroundings. But the energy analysis has allowed us to get a answer. As the, but the energy analysis has allowed us to reach 
an answer for our speed, a kind of theoretical maximum speed of that pellet. The pellet's going to slow down quite quickly, of course. If you were to run this as a practical, you might want to consider, well, what else can you get from this? You could, rather than just do one reading, you could actually get the class to do a force extension graph. And, well, you could teach them about Hooke's Law, you could do springs first. You could teach them that when you do this for an elastic band rather than a spring, you don't get that perfect proportional shape. You get a shape, something more like this. And on unloading, you actually get a slightly different shape. So you can load and unload an elastic band and you get a shape like this. If you're interested in teaching them that the area under the graph actually is the energy stored in the spring, then you can talk about, well, the energy on unloading that is actually less than the energy that you put, you put in when you loaded it. So this will give a, a lower answer if you use the area underneath the graph than our speed that we just worked out there. Also, how could you verify that? Well, an interesting thing would be to verify that with a bit of video analysis. Just a simple little bit of looking between a couple of frames. How far has the pellet actually gone? How close is that to the speed that you've calculated? Or indeed a more complex one using a program like Tracker. Hope this has been interesting. Run this practical with your class and let me know how it goes. Sorry. Just talking to my camera.